I'm proud of you. It takes courage to do this shit. Yeah. I had to muster it up, <laughs> fucking with that damn tree. It's round, it's round. Then I looked down and said, Norman, look at you stupid, dude. You got on Christmas socks in March. <laughs> You're wearing green Christmas socks. Oh, God. All right, so welcome back, Norman. Uh, glad to be back. You were, uh, miss you were missing in action for a while here. Yeah. You were supposed to show up a couple couple weekends ago for another yeah. update, but you, you didn't show. And, uh, no, I didn't show up. That told me exactly what was going on. You, you tell, tell me what you've been through. Well, um, I lost my sister, dear, dear sister. And um, she died in an auto accident. Yeah, died in a very vicious auto accident um, where her head was severed. And, uh, you know, um, you went to the funeral. Did the funeral and uh, got, got people that just want to lamb blast you and things like that. And combination of that and trying to deal with the emotions and it's just, I couldn't take it anymore. So I went and I got high as a motherfucker. And I continued to get high. I'm thinking about time, is it? I'm thinking about four hours, I'll, four to six hours, I'll have like 24 hours. Um, of course, I'm ashamed about it. And I think with me, I put, I put a little bit too much on myself. It's not so much that I have that, that I got this feeling. It's just that, okay, today's okay. Just keep going forward. I try my best with positivity and, and everything within me, even my wherewithal. And I questioned myself about five nights ago, where the fuck is your wherewithal? What the fuck are you doing? For Christ's sakes, right now, I have on Christmas socks in March. And some people might deem that funny, but to me, it's, that's a fucking shame. Um, I don't use anything as an excuse. I believe the excuses are skins of reasons wrapped in lies, you know? And basically, I use because I wanted to. Because the evidence is, is, is quite clear. Um, driven by a negative emotional status, driven by the loss of a loved one, the disease itself is unique enough to come together and combine itself and, and fuck me up. Coming to see you, I went around the tree for four times because I didn't want to come here. Shame. Yeah. I, um, I'm probably really not gonna like any of the comments that are negative, but that's okay. Because I gotta stay in that mind frame that it's gonna get better. I remember you were talking about two steps forward, one step back. Well, God damn it, I'm tired of stepping. <laughs> you know, I mean, and, and, and some people may say, well, if you're so tired, why, why, don't, why don't you just stop? God damn it, it's not that damn easy. I think it's the hardest thing anyone ever could ever, could ever do. You know, um, job-wise, everything's just fine. You know, there wasn't a cloud on the horizon as the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous states. And unconsciously, I knew it, but it didn't surface because I got real shaky before I drank. I drank first, and then I went and got some crack, and I've even tried crystal meth. No, I, don't, I don't like that shit. But, you know, as, um, as devastated as I may be, I got to pick my head up. I gotta keep going forward. I gotta muster up the wherewithal. I gotta keep praying. I gotta still keep believing. I still got to have that faith. You know, that unknowing, untouchable faith. I have to have it. You know, I was put in some situations while I was, you know, running around where they weren't death defying, you know, but I had to fight, you know. And I don't like to fight because when I fight, every time I fight, I see my mother laying in a casket. And that's all I remember. Um, I see mom and, and it's like I'm black. It's just, and this guy told me, he said, man, he said, dude, 
I've never seen anybody fight like that. I said, what happened? He said, what, what happened? He said, look, this guy was laying on the ground with blood coming out of his ears and his nose. And I got the hell away from over there. Um, I could have killed that guy. All about drugs. He wanted a hit and I told him no. I remember that. What if the situation was turned around? What if that would have been me? What if I would have hit my head on the pavement? That was all she wrote. So I just, um, at this point, I really don't know, but I know I'm gonna know soon. I really thank God for keeping me uh, with some semblance of sanity while I was out there. And last night was the first time I really had a comfortable sleep because I had to keep one eye open. I was down here on Skid Row for a minute and I went to other places because I didn't want anybody to find me. And lo and behold, when I come back to fucking Skid Row, somebody but, but you, sees you, me. You, you were in a, in a, put you up in a place for a while. Yeah, 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 I was there. Yeah, I was in a, in a place before I moved into the, uh, the transitional home and everything was fine, you know. I even seen a drug deal in the motel go down. But I'm like, hmm, it's not that I just, you know, brush it off like, shit, I got this. No, I was like, wow, you know, that's something. No thought. I'm not going to ask myself why anymore because, goddamn, I know why. Bottom line is I'm an addict. The bottom line is I have a, a mind is you may seem how, you may, you may see, people may think that I'm brilliant as hell. Yeah, I have some book sense. And I have some street sense. But I have to really put this in my mind. There's times when I have no sense. My mind has the capability of fucking me without my permission. And it's unique that it always does this when things are okay. You understand that everyone does though. And I'm beginning to learn that because I've seen a, a couple of people that were in recovery with me at certain times. And uh, one of the guys we sat down and he said, man, I'm tired of doing this. I said, I am too, but I can't stop. He said, you too? I said, yeah. I said, the moment I said I want to stop, I'll get up, walk down the street and hear somebody say, hey, look, do this, do that. There's not too much to say, but I know it's a whole lot to do. Um, got some bereavement time, so I'm okay, as far as that's concerned. And then I asked myself last night, do I really want to go back to that job? Do I really need to go back? Did, so you didn't lose the job? No. Do I really? How did you not lose your job? Um, because they knew about the, I told them flat out about the bereavement. And uh, they said, okay, well, you're new, but you know, they offered me some, some time off, some bereavement time. And I was like, cool. I mean, cause I work for a company, man, that's really cool. Because of your sister's death, they gave you time off. Yes. Got it. And um, I mean, you know, I went to the, I think I text you. I went to the main office and everybody stood up and applauded me. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Well, somebody seen my story and they told someone and they told someone and they all watched it. And a couple of ladies were in tears and they just looked at me like, you know, you're so encouraging. You're such a breath of fresh air. You're such a light. Mm. Hmm. Wow. There's many, and you still are. Many positive things that I receive. There's times when the negative dominates, and this was one of those times. I'm gonna pick it up. It's gonna get better. May have another setback. I don't know. I'm not gonna deal with the predictable mind, but I am gonna take things a hell of a lot slower a hell of a lot slower to give myself ample time to understand 
that motherfucker, you're not out of the fucking water just because things are okay. I know I put too much on myself. I don't believe ego and pride set in. Pride only set in when I just uh, tried to walk down this damn street and I was, I was like, no, nah, man, I'm gonna disappoint Mark. But see, it's not, on the bus ride over here, it's not about disappointing people and it's not about disappointing me. It's the fact that I gotta understand that motherfucker, you're an addict and this shit happens. Maybe there'll come a time where it won't happen again. We take the bitter with the sweet, we do what we need to do, and we keep moving forward. That's all I can do. Now, losing, losing your sister is a serious, you know, it's a hard thing to go through. And a relapse is, is almost... Inevitable. Inevitable. <laughs> I mean, it's just... And you were close to her. Yeah. Yeah, I, um... At the funeral, I, it was the first time I thought about it. I was like, oh shit. And I said a prayer and it went away. It was a fleeting thought, but that's the motherfucker that got me. That one right there. When it came to a point where it came up in here. I think you called me from Detroit or, or Houston where you were. Yeah, for, for, yeah. And, and you know, you look at. And you, and you were doing fine. Yeah, God damn. If I could turn my damn leg around, I'd kick my own fucking ass, you know, with these Christmas socks on, man. You know, I just, um, if I disappointed anyone, I'm not gonna say I'm sorry, and I'm not gonna apologize. But I will ask you to keep, continue to pray for me. Um, for anyone that's gonna say a negative comment, it's okay. But. Always be mindful to see to it that your own house is in order. To myself, I want to say, forgive yourself, Norman. Fix your shoes up, put them on, and let's walk again. Just a setback. Yeah. Kids don't know, but they do know. Oh, yeah. Baby's mothers, both of them called me. I didn't answer the phone. My oldest daughter's mother wants to marry me. She says, you're the only man I've ever loved. So what if you smoked up three houses and four cars when we were together? I'm like, what the fuck you mean, so what? She said, oh yeah, yeah, I was mad at you, but I never should have left you. Because she brought me home, my car was in the, uh, in the uh, auto repair place. And she picked me up from work and she took me home to an empty house. And I'm like, I turned around and looked at her. She just had tears. She said, I can't do it no more. I said, well, what about uh, uh, Alexis? She said, I'm gonna take care of the baby. I said, what about me? I wanna see the baby. We'll discuss that. And I'm like, no, I don't leave. She says, no, and I have to. That was one of those heart ripping moments in my life. Cause I loved her and I still love her. Good woman. You know, she did. I haven't looked for my mom in relationships, but that motherly instinct I do, because I think it was taken away so, so quickly. And uh, she's that type of woman. Well, she'll lay in bed and cuddle with me, and I like that shit. You know, I'm just a big ass fucking baby, and I like that shit. She would cook food and bring it to me, and, you know. And the fucking thing about it is, when I first tried to talk to her, she wouldn't say shit. I said, hello, and she walked right past me. I'm like, yeah, okay. I think a couple of days went by, and I said, hello, seen her again. She walked right past me, I said, what the fuck is wrong with her? So I'm gonna have to put my macaroni with the cheese down. So I told this little girl that stayed across the hall from me in this apartment building in Detroit, because I was having a house work on. I said, hey, you know that big light skin, that thick light skin girl upstairs? She said, yeah. Ooh, no, you like her, don't you, see? Well, give me some candy and I'll tell her, okay, I'm gonna give her some candy. For four days, I sat there and waited at the time that I knew she, she didn't show up. Lo and behold, one day I'm going to check my mail and here she comes. She said, mm. 
I said, pardon me? She says, so you're the guy who gets little kids to do their dirty work, huh? I said, what do you mean? Yeah, uh -huh. that little girl told me you like me. Why didn't you tell me yourself? You ain't got the nuts to tell me? I'm like, uh, yeah, you know, no, nah, I ain't talking about that. I said, okay. I said, well, hi. She said, well, hi. And that was it. Beautiful woman. Inside and out. I remember when they said our daughter might not live. Because she was born at six months. She'll be 33 in October. If she could fight to stay alive, so can I. I just realized that shit. She fought. She grew up to be a beautiful woman. Product of me. <sighs> yeah, there are times where I just steal it, man. You're the only person that ever allow me to. I just feel I'm real comfortable with you, man. Yeah. You know, I'm not. You know, intimidating my, you know, I have that fear of me, man, is he a punk? You know, I went through that shit. No, you're just a comfortable person, and I, it's not so much that I owed it to you, but I owe it to myself. I, I owe this, sitting in this seat right now, I owe it to me. I think these talks help you. They yeah. help people listening that are going through similar things. Yeah. And they just, they just help move the, the needle forward in terms of humans dealing with these kind of issues. Honesty like yours and Patrick's and yeah. many of the other people I interview, it really just helps. Because honesty, I believe, is, is the solution. Yeah, and I was talking to uh, our buddy, our mutual friend yesterday. He's like, he said, dude, you're the honest motherfucker I've ever met in my life. He said, Cause you just tell it. I said, well, what do I do? I sit up and tell a bunch of fucking lies? For what? What is it going to get me? This is what happened. This is what the fuck is going on. You know, it's almost like smoking a lot of crack and being in the sun. You, you know, you're running around, you're trying to find some shade you can't. So you're standing there sweating like a motherfucker. No, but it's like the reaction that all your coworkers had yeah. when they saw your videos. Yeah. They it wasn't like, negative. No, they were like. It was positive. And the president, she was like, she said, can, can I talk to you? I said, sure. And we sat on talking for like about an hour and a half, you know. And because I don't put my schooling on my resume. Because every time I put it on there, uh, I've only gotten, well, I've got six jobs with it. Disney, uh, let's see, Ford, General Dynamics, Disney, Universal, who the fuck else was out there? And Warner Brothers. Because my specific, I have a power resume and then an administrative resume. My power resume is with the schooling and everything I've done as far as computers, networks, security implementations, that, stuff like that. My other one is just administrative stuff. Like when I worked for uh, the SROs, the Skin Row Housing Trust, administrative stuff, office stuff, so. Cause every fucking time I went into a small job with that resume, they're like, hell no. You take my motherfucking job, I don't want your fucking job, you know, so. We'll muster it up. We always do. You got what it takes. Yeah. Yeah. Got to move from it. Well, shit, I'm, I can't go back to transition. You use once, that's it. So, we'll, we'll um, for my sakes, I was in a fucking tent for the first time in my life. <laughs> I was living in the tent. No, oh, God. Fucking rain. Goddamn tents leaking over here, sleeping over here, sleeping behind me. I'm like, what the fuck? I just laid there. That's a horrible life. Yeah, man, I'm like, God damn, how did they do it? But I stayed in the fucking tent. <laughs> stayed in the motherfucker. One thing that was really unique about it, I was smoking crack, and usually in a closed environment like that, I would get extremely paranoid. Not at all. Not at all. I think it was because I ran into a buddy of mine. He left to go to Vegas. Is this recording? Yeah. I can take stuff out though. He gave me something. Because he had to go. And I think that's one of those things that kept me okay. It was, you know. 
And then it dawned on me. Do you know what the fuck he did with this shit? Do you believe you need to get rid of this motherfucker? And I did. I had it for three days. But what if I would have got caught with drugs and a handgun that's not mine and everything would have been pinned on me? That would have been sad. I'm sitting in a motherfucking San Quentin looking stupid as a motherfucker. <sighs> Trying to keep my sanity. <sighs> Damn, that was a loud one. Yep. Thanks, man. Yeah, thank you, man. No problem. No problem at all. You're very brave. Ooh. Got to keep it in there. It's going to be okay. You're going to be all right. Yeah. All right, Norman. Thank you for coming in. Hey, no problem. Thank you for having the courage to come in. No problem. I'm proud of you. Wow.